Hey everybody, today I am in my new GMC Sierra EV Max range and we're going to be doing a Tesla supercharger charging test from 10 to 80%. I'm actually at a new Tesla V3 Plus supercharger that was just built, so it should be able to provide optimal charging times at a Tesla supercharger and we're going to see how it does. I'm going to use my Electron NACS to CCS adapter. I do really like the Electron adapter. It works really well. It's got some nice uh, connectors and it just is a really nice uh, unit that's very highly rated. So uh, I really like the Electron, so I'm going to use that uh, for my Sierra EV. And like I said, we're going to go ahead and do a 10 to 80% test and see how it does. All right, I initiated the charge in the Tesla app. Now I'll plug in the Tesla connector into the Electron adapter and then plug it into the car. And I'll start the timer. And there's the beep indicating the charging has started. Getting inside now, it's showing 48 miles of range to start. We are at 10% state of charge. You can see the charging is ramping up. Speeds are up to just over 160 kilowatts now. The battery pack voltage is 341 volts and the total current is just under 500 amps. These GM Ultium batteries will allow 500 amps for about 10 minutes from what I understand, so we'll see how it does. Now up to 169 kilowatts, about a minute into the test. I anticipate it slowly ramping up as the pack voltage increases, then it will likely fall off after that initial 10 minutes and then slowly ramp up again. So I'll let it charge and check in periodically with you. All right, five minutes in now, and we're up to 16% state of charge, and the pack voltage is up to 353 volts. So the charge rate is up to right around 175 kilowatts, and we're showing 80 miles of indicated range now. Okay, we just hit 10 minutes, and we're up to 22% state of charge and 177 kilowatts charge rate. It will be interesting to see if the current drops down soon. And there it just dropped now to just under 400 amps. So that was expected, but obviously that's gonna drop the charge rate. We're now right around 141 kilowatts, so about a 35 kilowatt drop. And from here, it should just steadily increase the rest of the charge up to around 80%. Now that we're just over 10 minutes, I'll check on the temperatures using my thermal camera from HFS Tools. Temperatures are fairly low, coming in only around 120 degrees Fahrenheit. So. That's good to see, especially with nearly 500 amps going through the adapter for 10 minutes. We'll see how much the temperatures increase as we get further into the test. Now we're closing in on 15 minutes and still going strong, but I wanted to show you guys the estimated time here to charge to various percentages. Obviously, 100% will be the longest and the charge rate will really slow down at a high state of charge. But let's see what it shows for 80%. It goes from an 11.15 estimated time to be ready to just 50 minutes, which is 10.22. So it saves nearly an hour only charging to 80% versus 100%. And if we do 90%, it shows 10.45. So it's estimating just over 20 minutes to go from 80% to 90% state of charge, and then another 30 minutes to go from 90% to 100. Let's see 75%. That shows 45 minutes. So you only save five minutes to do 75% versus 80%. That shows you how much quicker it charges below 80% versus above 80%. I just thought that was interesting, so I figured I'd share. All right, 21 minutes in now and still very flat at 142 kilowatts. We're now up to 34% state of charge, still showing adding about 300 miles of range per hour. And we're at 169 miles of estimated range. Now 25 minutes in and a lot of the same, still very flat at 142 kilowatts. Now that it's been going strong for over 25 minutes, we'll check the temperatures here again.
Okay, half an hour in, and we're up to 44% state of charge and slowly increasing the charge rate with the pack voltage, now up to 144 kilowatts. All right, 10 minutes later, we're closing in on 55% state of charge and up to 147 kilowatts. The truck shows we're adding 310 miles of range per hour at this rate, and we're up to 265 miles of estimated range, so over 200 miles added in 40 minutes. That's not too bad. Now at the 45 minute mark, we're over 60% state of charge and up to 149 kilowatts. 50 minutes in, we're up to 66% state of charge and now over 150 kilowatts. Still going strong. I'm showing we're adding 318 miles of range per hour. And we're up to over 320 miles of range. So at this point, we've added over 250 miles of range. Okay, we just hit one hour and we're now up to 77% state of charge, charging at 154 kilowatts. We're adding about 325 miles per hour at this rate and we're over 370 miles of estimated range. So in an hour, we've added over 320 miles of estimated range here. That's solid. Now looking at the temperatures an hour in, I'm still showing a maximum temperature in the 130s. That, again, this is not hot at all and very good to see after a long test like this. I have no concerns at all about the temperatures. All right, now we're about to hit 80% state of charge, so we'll go ahead and watch here. And there we just hit 80% after an hour and two minutes. And we're showing 385 miles of estimated range, so 10% to 80% in an hour and two minutes. And we added about 335 miles of estimated range. Now we'll go ahead and wait and watch here for a minute or two and see if it starts to reduce the current now that we're over 80% state of charge. Remember, most EVs really slow down at 80% and above. And there we go. About a minute after it hit 80% state of charge, it's now reducing the amperage. You can see it slowly but steadily dropping down and the charge rate slowing down with it. And this will continue as the state of charge increases up to 100%. So yeah, that's good to know. All right, so final thoughts. First thought that comes to mind is it's not that fast. Uh, 10 to 80% in just over an hour, it's not gonna break any speed records, but it is important to remember a few things. So the first thing I say that is important to remember is that this is a Tesla supercharger and they are not able currently until V4 is rolled out, they're not able to take advantage of the 800 volt capabilities of the Sierra EV, the Silverado EV, the Hummer EV, basically any 800 volt uh, or higher architecture vehicle. Um, they can't take advantage of that at Tesla superchargers. So with that said, I don't think it was too bad. It was a very flat uh, charging session from 10 to 80%. Uh, after that initial 10 minutes and the amperage dropped from 500 to uh, basically 400, um, it was very flat and it worked without any issues or hiccups, which is good. I definitely uh, have come to expect that from Tesla superchargers. Um, but another thing that's important to remember is that while the 10 to 80 percent uh, time, like I said, of just over an hour isn't anything to write home about, uh, it's important to think about the mileage. So a lot of vehicles you do 10 to 80 percent and you might only gain 175, 200 miles of range. But in this, 10 to 80% gets you well over 300 miles of range. So if you think about it from that standpoint, 
it's not too bad getting over 300 miles of range um, in just over an hour and um, something to think about too is i think tesla superchargers could be a great place to stop if you're going to stop and maybe get some lunch or dinner um, and you're going to be sitting there for an hour hour and a half maybe two hours uh, because if you start from a low state of charge it's going to take a while um, 10 like you saw uh, on the the gauge display there it was basically saying two hours to go from 10 to 100 percent at this tesla supercharger and that gives you plenty of time to go inside eat stretch your legs that kind of thing and then not have to worry about idle field idle fees uh, sitting at a dc fast charger uh, like you would um, if you once you get up to the eight to 100 uh, percent um, basically all uh, fast chargers charge an idle fee so um, it could be an option for that uh, for road trips um, if you can plan accordingly uh, for your eating but uh, overall i don't think it was too bad uh, like i said i think um, the the range added uh, over the time frame is something that's okay. Um, not like I said, the fastest, but also not the slowest. I've definitely seen slower. And um, if I need something faster, I'll stop at an Electrify America or an EV Go station that can do 300, 350 uh, kilowatts, maybe an Iona station. I've seen people get over 370 kilowatts uh, charge rate in these vehicles, and uh, that will obviously charge it up significantly quicker. So anyway, I just wanted to do this test for you guys. Let me know if you have any questions uh, about the charging test. And if you guys like this video, be sure to hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe for more videos. I have a lot more Sierra EV content coming out, so stay tuned. Uh, but thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next video.